This is going to be your guide to the top 10 most important tips in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. So the first thing I strongly recommend, and I've learned this through painful experience, is what you want to do is you want to go to Madame Celadon and you just want to go and set up a jolly nature encounter. So that's going to be pink and blue, it's the berries, it's the stats, it's how this has been for years now in Pokemon. So you set that up and then Pokemon will appear jolly. Now there's, there's a very specific reason. And I learned this the hard way because you know what's cool? I have a shiny Charizard and I have a shiny Dragonite. You know what isn't cool? They don't have natures that I can really do anything with. We have a Docile and we have an Impish. So by setting this up, if you happen to encounter a shiny Charizard or shiny Dragonite while you're not really doing much of anything, you know, if you're not going for strictly competitive Pokemon, if you're at the start of a chain or something and a shiny happens to appear, it's going to be jolly and you can use that. Also, technically timid work, special attacking Dragonite and Charizard Y, yeah, or jolly for Charizard X, stuff like that. But I mean, please don't make the mistake I did. It'll save you a lot of pain when you realize what happened. Oh, and speaking of Madame Celadon, if you're confused as to how she works, it resets at midnight of your console time, so try not to set her around, you know, 11pm or anything like that. Also, if you transition the next day, remember to get her set up again. And like I said, it's for the Sky Pokemon that you really want to be worried about, but if you're going and chaining another Pokemon, then don't forget Madame Celadon, so just in case you happen into a 5 IV, even while shiny hunting or something, you can have competitive Pokemon on the side. Now we're going to be talking about catch combos and getting candies and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So did you know that the more of a Pokemon you catch of the same species, the easier it becomes to catch. So at 50 the Pokemon gets easier, you might notice this as the rings scale down in color. Ultra Ball might go from like orange to yellow or red to orange or something like that. And the Great Ball might go from yellow to green and eventually the Pokeball will be something to where you can just keep catching that Pokemon. So what supports this is it's actually an obscure mechanic from Pokemon Go that's been brought into Pokemon Let's Go. October 5th, 2016. So after launch of Pokemon Go, but not initially with the game, if you're paying attention, then you get to be rewarded. Earn a new capture bonus to increase the odds of catching rare Pokemon. We are adding a new feature that grants a catch bonus when you earn medals based on catching certain types of Pokemon. Now in Pokemon Go it's by type, in Pokemon Let's Go it's by species, I'm just kind of showing as you increase the amount of catches on a specific kind of Pokemon, then that makes them easier to catch. Uh, speaking of catch combos, this is something that I'm pretty sure everyone knows about by now, but just in case you're not aware, even if you encounter a species of Pokemon that you're catch comboing, you can run away from it and not break the combo. About every day or so, I see a few comments of people saying, wait, you can run away from a catch combo? Yeah, so that means you can preserve it if you think that things are going a little fishy. Uh, my, my general rule is after missing two Pokeballs, I just go, uh, let's, let's, I'm just going to miss two for the sake of it. And I just go, nope, I'm not having any of that, I'm out. And that way you can try to reduce the risk as much as possible, especially after a combo of 10. So once you reach a high enough catch combo after 10, uh, that species of Pokemon is more likely to spawn. So really, you don't lose anything by ignoring it. You know, you run away and you're good to go. It is true that Pokemon do have a certain animation, that they play a different kind of attack animation when they're about to flee, but if you're in the get ready phase and you're about to throw a Pokeball and they use that animation, there's nothing you can do about it. By the time your Pokeball is in the air, that Pokemon's gone. I'd rather not chance it. I'd just rather leave early. So even with that little hint, I don't think it's worth it. Bonus tip! Don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. This will keep you updated for the best new Pokemon content as it goes live. And the thing is, if you've already done these things, I recommend doing it again. Some people have had some pretty mixed results that by resubbing, re-notifying for the bell, YouTube works again after being broken. And another thing is, if you have any questions about Pokemon Let's Go, strongly recommend that you check out my Pokemon Let's Go Guide playlist in the description down below. I've probably covered it if you want to know what's going on. Rare Pokemon, shiny Pokemon, finding legendaries in the sky, money making, it's all here. Competitive bottle caps, fancy stuff. So check that out and you might get the answers for what you're looking for when it comes to Pokemon Let's Go. Bonus tip number four, always check the skies. You never know when that's going to be a green Dragonite butt and you don't want to pass it off. So yeah, you just run up, get a little peek, alright, not shiny, and then go back to what you were doing. This goes with the Madame Celadon thing earlier because as you're just naturally catching and chaining Pokemon, you're going to end up with a 31 chain, especially if you're shiny hunting for something else. But what that means is the odds of those Charizard and Dragonite are also going to be pretty low, so they could be shiny and you don't even know it, which is why I say always check it. You never know when things are going to go crazy. 
Another tip that I have is get yourself a payday Pokemon. One of the best things I've noticed is just like, have payday. That way, whenever you're going through the Elite Four, you make a bit more money. Might top you off to where you don't need to make another run, or also the daily events. That you can battle the gym leaders again every day, and they give you a decent amount of money. Adding a couple extra thousand Poke Dollars to each fight means you might not have to go back to the Elite Four. You know, just kind of slow grind it up all day, every day, then you're just going to have a lot of money. Because money, it either goes from having way too much in Let's Go, to suddenly being almost completely out of it. So as we can see here, this is the, po this is the list of Pokemon that learn the TM Payday in Pokemon Let's Go. And what you want to do is you want to go for normal type Pokemon. They get stabbed, they're going to do the most damage, get them to level 100, and things are going to be great. So Snorlax is the best one, because it has the most damage and then you can just kind of like max it out with candy so mighty candy quick candy and then the Snorlax is going to outspeed and one-shot everything uh Persian definitely a Pokemon if you want to go with the classic on that payday a little easier to get a little easier to train especially if you combo me out on route 24 or route 25 uh, I don't think Eevee is going to work out doesn't have enough damage then all of the other Pokemon are not stabbed so that's going to be something to keep in mind now if you want payday as a TM because you can either just catch me out catch Persian already knows payday but if you want to get as a TM we're already in the right place to do it. Route 3, or actually technically Route 4, this guy, this coach trainer, battle him. He gives you payday, you put it on your Pokemon, and then things are just going to be money everywhere, and that's what I have to recommend. So our next tip is going to talk about candies. Candies are really weird when it comes to Pokemon Let's Go, because technically they're useless on a competitive level. That if you go online, you do the flat battling, awaken values, candies, they do not apply to flat battles. So if you're trying to get like plus 200 every stat to get a Pokemon competitive, you don't need to do that. There's effectively no EVs, which means IVs and natures, that's all that matters for competitive, which I think is really nice. Make a team really quick, go out, start having some competitive fun. However, Candies are still going to be pretty important when it comes to making your Pokemon stronger. Like I just said with that Snorlax, or with a Payday Pokemon, or grinding the Elite Four, if you're faster than all the opponents, and you're doing way more damage to where you're finding one-shots that Pokemon might not naturally have, yeah, that's going to make it to where your money-making's be better, everything just kind of gets better with that, so, something to know. Now, another thing about candies is the amount of candy you receive from a Pokemon increases with the number that you've caught of that species not necessarily catch combo. So as you get a catch combo, you're going to get more candy. As you caught more of that species, you're going to get more candy. You can increase this with pineapple berries. That's kind of it. Also going back to the payday Pokemon, uh, payday is a physical move, so you need mighty candy. Might as well just chain for Ekans here. Like, everything's really nice. That could be a sh shiny Charmander that pops up. That could be a shiny Dragonite just hanging out right there, and a shiny uh, Charizard might appear. And Ekans is a pretty easy Pokemon to catch in combo. There's other Pokemon that give Mighty Candy that you might want to use competitively. So just kind of mix and match it your way. Now for Quick Candy, you can catch Weedle in Viridian Forest. Get a large combo of them, really easy to catch, tons of Quick Candies. Then you can max it out, make money on Payday, and that's kind of how candies work. Pretty much the biggest point being, don't need them for competitive, but you can also just get tons in general like that. And it's just a natural flow of the game, so I like it. Now this next tip is for Shiny Hunters. Standing still is bad. You might see the occasional shiny hunter or guide mention that if you're standing still, that is going to make your lore last longer and it means you encounter more Pokemon. And the lore is a pretty crazy thing in Pokemon Let's Go. Increases shiny odds and also increases the speed that Pokemon appear. So it's 100% necessary. However, because of how the game works, it seems that Pokemon, when you're standing still, if they despawn and respawn, it doesn't reset their shi shiny chance. Also, it takes a lot longer for that to occur. Because once you reach the spawn limit in an area, well now you gotta wait at least 20 seconds for one Pokemon to go away, and that's slower than just hopping over here and spawning a new batch of Pokemon. Now, some people might think, well, if you're wasting money on lures, then that means it's just gonna take longer because of the money making and stuff, but no, if you're doing your daily stuff for the uh, gym leaders, or if you're just clearing the Elite Four, can actually pay for lures, encounter more Pokemon, and end up with more shinies at the end of the day. So that's just 100% the best way of doing it. There's also some other areas that are just gonna be different, like don't stand still still in a route that has an exit nearby that if you can quickly refresh the route that's just more pokemon general and sometimes it's with a few steps but this is also comes at the cost of certain pokemon encounters that if you're going for rare pokemon such as that charmander over there rare pokemon can only be on screen one at a time which means that if i encounter this charmander 
run away, well, that means I just cleared it and then it gets to respawn. So you do have to understand the nuances of how Pokemon spawning works, and these are going to be the little tips about that. So we can also run away from the seconds. Again, we have a chain going, but it doesn't matter. We have a high chance of getting shinies. We got to run around and make sure everything's good. There's Charmander again. There's Ekans again. We can catch it for the candies for, for the payday. Everything just comes together, guys. So because of that, just make sure you're, you're keeping up and you're keeping... Like, you just need to make sure your brain is keeping track of everything, and then Pokemon Let's Go is going to be very re rewarding for you. Now, the next thing I want to say about Pokemon Let's Go is that, unfortunately, some of the routes are just completely useless. That Route 4 is almost identical to Route 3, but you're going to find less Pokemon on Route 4, and that just kind of goes to the spawn cap. Over here, on the east side of Mount Moon, you can only find that one little patch of grass right before you get to Cerulean City. Only four Pokemon can spawn there at a time, and it's only that one patch of grass. As we can see right here, there's two you can fly over to really easily. It's a spawn cap of six, and it's effectively the same Pokemon. Only Psyduck spawns here on Route 4, but you can find Psyduck in a lot of other places. Another route that's just straight up worse is going to be Route 5. Route 5 has those stupid ledges, and it's kind of hard to manage the Pokemon, and it's hard to catch them all. Same exact spawns on Route 6. So go do your research for the routes where Pokemon can spawn, and then you're just going to see that, yeah, you might be farming Pokemon in the wrong area, because there's a better route for getting more Pokemon spawns, and just the same exact Pokemon that would spawn in another area. Alright, getting near the end of the video, so what you want to do is take your flying Pokemon over to the Seafoam Islands and then head into this entrance if you are short on heart scales. Heart scales, they actually seem to have low supply but high demand in this game, which makes things pretty interesting. Now, the reason why you're going to want them is for the move relearner. She can be find in, found in the Pokemon Center at the Pokemon League, and she works just like in the 7th generation. In the 7th generation, things got mixed up quite a bit. Also, this is location. Talk to this rock every day, you get a heart scale. But there's actually two heart scales that you can find in the Seafoam Islands. So you need to head back up to the entrance. And then from this ladder, we want to cross on over to the other side of the Seafoam Islands and hop down this hole twice. There's going to be a rock by here that does have the second heart scale. So yeah, this kind of like cuts you off from the other side and it's kind of weird how this place is like an island. But then you go over here and that is going to be where you get your second heart scale. And the cool thing about the move relearner in this game is that like the 7th generation, access to all of the moves that Pokemon gets, even if it hasn't learned it yet. So that makes it a bit more interesting. And then my final tip is that once you have a lot of money, just buy like 50 escape ropes. You are going to thank me when you're just kind of wandering through a cave, either catching Pokemon, farming items. Like, this is really great for the Cerulean Cave. They go into Cerulean Cave, you go upstairs to the treasure room, search for some items, and then you escape rope out. Going to save you a lot of time. And it's just one of those things, like going for items, going for TMs, trying to do some searching through the game. Peace out. Saves you some time, and once you're getting all that money from Payday, all the other methods, like my money-making guide, which you can find in my playlist, you're going to be set, and then you're going to thank me for it later. Because, like, it's it's those little things, I feel, that really wear you down in these Pokemon games. It's like, oh, I need to do this, I have to go back over here. Just cut that out, you know? A little quality of life, and that's going to be awesome. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Maybe comment down below your favorite little hacks and tips and tricks when it comes to Pokemon Let's Go. And that's going to make things awesome. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.